Unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth, and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language, but the Word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the Word. Say something in the Spirit. Say something in the Spirit. Say something in the Spirit. Come on, somebody say something in the spirit. Jatanda kota la makaza bakashe rebrosa. Zinda dada kota kara la 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 bakota. Reba kusa baba kusa kara bakusa rabaman. Aha zanda hote re kuko brokota kabai. Jatanda dada rapura baba baba bakuse rebrosa kere baba baba. Demando sobo shara baba baba bakuse reba kore man. Holy Spirit, we thank you. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your love. We thank you for the perfection of love. The Bible says, and this is love made perfect, that we might have confidence on that day. For as he is, so are we in this world. They are not just words, they are present reality of the New Testament dispensation. They are the definitive theology of Christianity, our oneness with Him. This is the record the Bible says that He has given us eternal life. 
And he that hath eternal life hath the Son. And he that hath the Son hath eternal life. And that is the life that raised Christ from the dead. And if that same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead resides inside of you, the Bible says it will give your mortal bodies life. Our testimony is a testimony of peace. Our testimony is a testimony of victory. We are more than conquerors through Christ who strengthens us. The Bible says that for our life afflictions, we are but for a moment. 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 But for a moment back for a moment cannot be compared to the way of glory that shall be revealed for us while we look not on the things that are seen oh poverty can be seen sickness can be seen Bacteria can be seen in a microscope. Viruses can be seen. But when we will look not on the things that are seen. For the things that are seen are temporal. But the things that are not seen. The Bible says they are eternal. The Bible says that he's held in perfect peace, <laughs> whose mind is stayed on you. Our mind is stayed on you, God. Our mind is stayed on you, Jehovah God. We, we have no other way. We look to no other means. The Bible says you're the author and the finisher of our faith. You are the beginning and the end. The communication of our faith is effectual. We are acknowledging your goodness in our life, your goodness in our health, your goodness in our family, your goodness in our understanding, your goodness in our knowledge, your goodness in our business, your goodness in our career, your goodness with our children, your goodness with our days. Your goodness with our education. Your goodness with our experience. Your goodness with our understanding. Hey, Papa. Shatabango. Kapra Katalama. Shababa Deke. Echeri Mango. Shibababa Karama. from every side. It is too late to fail. It is too late to fail. Sherebataka. <laughs> My heart is indicting a good matter. I'm speaking on the speaking of things that have Done. Touching the king. And now my tongue is as a pen of a ready writer. For you have poured grace upon my lips. And has made me greater than my enemies. The Lord is your life. And your salvation. Is the strength of your life. Shatatara Baba. Shebra Kaye. Shebra Doro. Thank you, Lord. 
Tell him, God, I trust you. I trust you, God. When peace like a river appears my way, when sorrows I see below.
It is well with my soul. <laughs> I, I, I don't think it, I know it. It is well with you. That it is well. And see, we're not just singing. Understand, we're, we're proclaiming something in the spirit. So, who understands what we're doing right now? Who understands what we're doing right now? Listen. Oh, you could have According to this power, that work is in you. Just what he said. 
somebody in my car is able. Tell somebody in my car is able. He's able. Thank you. You may be seated. Greet your neighbor on the left and the right and tell him, my God, he's able. My God is able. He is able. He is able. The Lord has spoken to us a couple of weeks ago to touch the area of faith a bit deeply. How many of you know that? Yes. He spoke to us to go into the area of faith a bit deeper because we have gotten the understanding recently because we are stretching forth we, we need to position ourselves for that great time praise God for me I have made up my mind I'm going far I don't know whether I have a witness here if you have not made up your mind we shall persuade you praise God in the mighty name of Jesus James chapter 1, verses 21. If you're there, you say, Amen. James says, Wherefore, the Bible says, Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive, the Bible says, with meekness, the Bible says, the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. Hallelujah. Somebody said, The word of God is able to save my soul. Say it again. The word of God is able to save my soul. But the Bible calls it the engrafted word. Give me the amplified of that. The amplified says, get rid of all uncleanness and wrap and out growth of wickedness. And in a humble, gentle, modest spirit, he says, receive and welcome the word which implanted and rooted in your heart contains the power to save your soul. He says, if this word is implanted and rooted in your heart, if it is implanted and rooted in your heart, if it is implanted and rooted in your heart, it is able to serve your soul. Now the next line tells us, Wherefore, yes, he says, but be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if ye be a hearer of the word and not be a doer, you're likened unto a man belong, beholding his natural face in a glass. And he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straight away forgetteth what manner of man he was. Somebody shout hallelujah. And he says, but whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the word, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Somebody shout hallelujah. When James writes in the very scriptures that I've just read for you, he creates a paradox, a sort of contradiction, if you are not a reader of the word. Praise God. And that contradiction has ensued in the body of Christ. It has continued amidst the brethren of faith. That very confusion that is misunderstood in how and what James means when he says certain things is the very reason why brethren have the word but the word does not work for them. Praise the Lord Jesus. Satan, the deceiver of this world, is powerless, but he is crafty. Who understands what I mean by that? The Bible calls him subtle or subtle. The Bible speaks of his subtlety. 
The same that he uses to deceive Adam and Eve into eating the forbidden fruit. Are you following what I'm saying? Satan is a deceiver. He carries a form of deception. What we're dealing with, even today, in the body of Christ, is how misrepresented the person of Jesus Christ is in almost every dispensation we have lived. And almost, the Bible says, all the ways of a man seem rightful. And there are some ways that seem like are accurate, but the end thereof is destruction. You understand what I'm saying? There is nothing that is planted by God that can be uprooted. But everything that is not planted by Almighty God, the Bible says, it shall be uprooted. Even till now, the Christianity we're dealing with, the things that you see not working in the Christ, in the Christendom, as a result of many mistakes and errors that were done many years ago. And some of us are paying prices without even the knowledge of that. And because we have preferred tradition above revelation, we prefer not to go back to the ancient landmarks for understanding, but we go back to them to establish more tradition. And the Bible says, and you've made the word of God void of its power because of your tradition. If you're a reader of church history, for example, there's a few things I could share here, but there are some I'm not able because this, of this kind of service. But I'll give you a few that I think you need to know. For example, Christianity has lived a life of persecution for as long as ancient history can teach you. Jesus was crucified. He was killed, not by unbelievers, but by those who were partakers of the Judaism of that time, Judistic teaching. You understand? Paul was beheaded by the instruction of Nero. Peter was hung upside down. You understand what I'm saying? They tell us that James was pushed off somewhere of a cliff and he died. The list is endless of how many some were in prison like John on the island of Patmos. The list is endless. But you'll find out that the, the, the persecutors of the Christian movement were not unbelievers, quote-unquote. There were people which also had a certain understanding of this God. You understand what I'm saying? And divisions and divisions have come through church history over time. But history also has taught us that as the church continued to be persecuted, the church sort of started embedding ideas of pagan and ungodly culture to exist. Because it seems as though there was no other way the church was going to exist without compromise. And that is why for those of you who have read probably the story of one Saint Ignatius, you realize that this fellow literally in the time when the church was being killed and persecuted, of course, rumors and false rumors had been put on them. There was a fire in Rome, I think in the 3rd or 4th century, and, 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 and many people were killed, and then that blame was put on the Christians. Because everything that happened was Christian. In fact, in Rome, I was, one time I was reading a story of how the Romans viewed Christians. Accusations upon accusations came on the church to a point where they believed Christians were cannibalists. They ate their babies. You understand what I'm saying? Every funny thing was on the Christian of that time. So a fire hits through. Nero blames the Christians. They're burnt and killed by the thousands. And so these guys need a place to exist. And they had to submit themselves partly to Roman culture and Roman systems of building ministry. Like the government of Rome saw the churches were built too. Some of these systems were okay, but some of them were not godly. So the history of the church in compromise is way, way long, far than many of us can think. 
the religions of this world, the factions, the differences that we have of opinion, all of these things as a result of compromises. Because some people don't believe that there is a, they, if you do certain things a certain way, the right way. Some people don't believe in doing things the right way when pressure comes. And that's why we have compromises, even in the Christian faith. Do you understand what I'm saying? If you read church history, we, Christianity is full of compromises. My pain there is that we're leaving Jesus in the center here. We're leaving Jesus in the center here. I wish I had the freedom to share the things on my heart. But I'm certain many of you will not be able to bear. But you see, we have left Christ here in the center. When we go to the doctrine, even the doctrine, we have lost Christ even in the doctrine. We, we have an understanding that is not the true teaching of our Lord and Savior. And because of that, traditions have substituted the principles and patterns of the Spirit. Our history is marred with Greek mythology and Egyptian uh, uh, mythology and Babylonian mythology. It's all, it's in there. We, we, we don't even smell it, but it's there. And because of that, the word of God every other day is getting void of its power. Because we have many things built in the system of Christianity that we've grown to accept. Somebody tells you, Easter is in April. We are going to celebrate Easter. What is Easter? <laughs> Easter is a pagan Easter. Not the, the days, right? But the name Estori was a pagan goddess, right? We, we celebrate Resurrection Sunday. But not Easter. Easter is not ours. No. Ours is Resurrection Week. We believe in the Resurrection. You understand what I'm saying? But, but who told you it was Easter? Where does Easter come from? It's a pagan thing that was imposed on the church then. And the church accepted it because it was the only way the church could, could survive. But you see, God is looking for people who are bold enough to say, look, this is not Christian. <laughs> if it's not, it's not Christian. So the events of that time of the death, the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus, they are okay for us to celebrate. But under a certain understanding. Otherwise, Easter eggs and bunnies, some of you don't even know what they mean. <laughs> what is an Easter egg? You understand what I'm saying? And that is why God has put us on a mandate to go back to the Word. To really go back to the What does the Word of God say? Because He told you, if it is implanted in your spirit, it has power to save you. If what is in you is not working, maybe it's not the word. It is something that has come in the form of the word, but it's not really the word. But if it is the word, it works. Tell your neighbor, if it is the word, it works. Are you following what I'm saying? If it is the word, it works. If it is the word, it works. Let me go a bit deeper here. James tells you, lay apart all filthiness, superfluity of naughtiness, and he says, and receive with meekness the word, the engrafted word, which is able to save you. It's able to work in you to save you. It has the ability to save you. It has the ability to help you. And then the next line says, but be doers of it. So, how then do I be a doer of what is able to do me? Are you following what I'm saying? How am I able to be a doer of what he has promised? That if I receive, it has the power to save me. What effort then does it require of me to apply on something he has already said? has the power on its own to save me. How then am I a doer of the word? Because again he said, I, I don't want to deceive myself. He's not lying, but there's something he's telling me and a carnal man, carnal Christian,
and will interpret it the wrong way and build a doctrine around it that is not intended. Colossians chapter 1 verses 5. He speaks of the hope which is laid upon you for you in heaven where all you had before in the word of the truth of the gospel which is this gospel he says which has come to you and the amplified give me that right of that verse 6 he says and which gospel has come to you indeed the whole world and that gospel the bible says that gospel that gospel the gospel the true gospel the bible says is bearing fruit and is still growing he says by its own inherent power so if you are saying that the gospel grows by its own inherent power why again is he telling me to do something that already has its power to do in me? For it is God who works in you both to will and to do according to his good pleasure. You see, there's a confusion there already. You're telling me the word of God has enough power to work in me. But again you're telling me, but again you have to do it. So how do I do what already has power to do? How do I, how do I drive a car that already can self-drive? Are you following what I'm saying? And then there, we've built doctrines around that. And said, ah, okay. He's saying, receive this word. It has power to work in you. Only if you do the actions of its work. And so some people have received the engrafted word of God. And they've also done the actions of this work and they've realized that they are not still having results. Now again there's a problem. To say that I have to do the word. I have to be obedient to the word. I have to do it. Okay, I'm doing the word. But again it's working in me. So where is, how far do I go in doing and how far does it go in doing? Where is the middle part for me to know where to begin from to do even as it is doing in me? Where do I begin from? Oh, there's human involvement. Yes. But you tell me, from where do I begin from when I receive the word? Do I do the action? Do, is it that by my action then the word starts to work in me? Because again, if, if, if by my actions the word starts to do in me, then who comes first and at what point do I come in and what is required of me to make sure that I don't do more than I'm expected of the word to fall into the, the bracket of dead works. But again, I don't do less to fall in the bracket of one who deceives himself. Are you, are you following me? And here is the answer. When you go back to James and he says but be doers of the word be doers of the word the Greek for doer is not just what you interpret in your English as action the Greek word for doer is poetess meaning be poets and not just hearers don't just be a hearer of the word be a poet of the word hallelujah who has understood what I just said? He's not talking about the action you apply to do the word. No. He's talking about you putting poetry and prose in the word. What do I mean by that? Who is a poet? A poet is someone who gives meaning to words. He gets a collection of words and puts it in form of a painting, like an artist would paint a picture. To give meaning to color. You understand? Like an artist gives meaning to color to paint a picture, so a poet gives meaning to words to bring understanding. He, 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 it's poetess, a maker, an author. You understand what I'm saying? A, a doer, a, 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 like a performer, one, one who, who obeys, but in which form? In the form of Poetry. He, he wants you to understand this from a poetic understanding, from what it means for someone to be a poet. You understand? In the book of Acts, he speaks of 
how he feels all things, right? And he says, even as your poets or writers have spoken or have said, there's a very word there, poetess. The very word there. I think somewhere in Acts 17. Yes. For in him we live, move, and have our own being. As sudden also as your own poets have said. The word there for poets is the same Greek word, poetess, as doers. Do you understand what I'm saying? This is what he means to say. He means, get a hold of the engrafted word of God, for it is able to save you, but be a poet of it. Make something out of these words. That's what it means. Create something out of the substance material. That's what it means. Don't just let the word of God, just, don't just hear it. And let it be. No. Create something. Perform something. A miracle. Hey. Out of it. Somebody shout hallelujah. Don't just receive it. No. Be a poet of it. Be an author. In other words, when he says that my heart is indicting a good man, right? He says I speak of the things that I have done touching the king. And what I say, and my tongue, he says, is as a pen of a ready writer, a ready poet. You understand? Do you understand it now? He, he says, my tongue is like of a ready poet, a ready writer. You know what? I get the word of God and I start creating. I create the kind of family I need. I create the kind of ministry I need. I create the kind of business I want. I create it. Hallelujah. By faith, we understand that the worlds were poeted. They were framed by the word of God. So that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. That means this same word made everything you see. And then you tell it cancer. You tell it death. You tell it poverty. Ah, uh -uh. he says no. Perform something. He says no. Perform something. Out of this word, be a doer. He's not talking about physical action. He's talking about the nudge of the spirit to create the artistry that has to pursue everybody who has understood the word. The word substance, faith is a substance. The word substance means material. So you have a material of cross, it's available to you. Right? Cloth is useless if it is doing nothing. But when you get this cloth and apply skill to it, poetry to it, artistry to it, you make a cloth. That's what he's saying. That I've given you the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now give it a set so it can be beneficial to you. Tell your neighbor, I have the word. Somebody shout hallelujah. That is how we create reality. That is how we speak things that are not as though they are. That is how we approve the unapprovable. That is how we change the unchangeable. Because it is impossible for God to lie. Somebody shout hallelujah. Now that takes away the man who teaches it from the perspective of works. That is why the Bible speaks of skillful in the word of God. He, he speaks of not just to know the word, but to have skill with it. To know how to use the word of God to get the results that you need. To know how to apply the word of God to get the results that you need. Do you understand what I'm saying? To know how to apply the word in situations that you're in. To know when you're in trouble, what do you do? When you receive bad news, what do you do? When you receive a false report, what do you do? Hallelujah. When you wake up in the morning and you're given the worst news in the world, what do you do? 
Because if you don't, you've forgotten who you are. You realize when he's talking about it, he, he attacks the identity of the man in the mirror. <laughs> because every time you look into the word, you see yourself. <laughs> when I read the word, for example, it says, and Jesus walked, I, I'm seeing myself in him. <laughs> And he laid hands on the sick. And he cleansed their lepers. I am seeing myself in him. As he is. But do you really believe it? Oh, it's here. No. That's why the word of God shifts from your head. And it enters your heart. Are you hearing me? When you learn both to receive the word and then also be a doer be a, a poet of it oh Matthew chapter 7 verses 24 he says whosoever eh not the few special men of God no whosoever not but for you, no, we disqualified you. You don't fast a lot. You don't pray. No. This thing, it, it doesn't, it, it's no respecter of person. Saints. He said, whosoever, whosoever, whosoever means anybody here. You know, sometimes when we're in the Christian faith and what to say, like, you know, we pray, but the Lord didn't. And I'm like, wait a minute. So, that particular person was disqualified in, a, in the whosoever. You understand? Whosoever shall say, faith, faith, does not have any disqualification clause of individuals. When it comes to faith, it does not disqualify anybody. In fact, faith qualifies everybody. Everybody. Whosoever shall say to this mountain, whatsoever you shall ask when you pray. Now, if you say whatsoever, healing, whatsoever. Breakthrough, whatsoever. Marriage, whatsoever. Increase the multiplication, whatsoever. Salvation, the anointing, glory. He said whatsoever. Now, if he has said whatsoever, whosoever, and then we say, but you know, we prayed, but you know, God just, wait. Now, we want to understand the sovereignty of God to override his word again. Because again, that now makes him a liar. His son who should have said, whosoever, however, or whatsoever, in certain instances. No, but he says, whosoever, heareth the sayings of mine and doeth them. Poets then. Poets are used as of what? You, you begin by speaking. Hallelujah. That, that's the beginning of it. That's the beginning of it. That's the beginning. He says you shall meditate upon these things and give yourself wholly to them that thy profiting may be evident upon all. But you see, meditation is not complete if muttering is not out. In fact, the literal definition of meditation it's to perceive with the spirit. Process in your heart enough to speak it. If you have not spoken it, meditation is not complete. Some of you must learn poetry of the spirit. Oh, I'm above and not beneath. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm going upward and upward only. I'm anointed from head to toe. From the crown of my head to the soles of my feet. I'm healthy. I have the life which is of God in me. I'm more than a conqueror. Through Christ which strengthens me. I'm blessed on the right. I'm blessed on the left. I'm blessed going in. I'm blessed going out. That is poetry. Somebody shout hallelujah. And then you wake up in the morning and he says, whosoever heareth, 
the saints of mine and doeth him. I will liken unto him like a wise man which built his house upon the rock, 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 rock. Who, who knows the rock? Yeah, yeah. Now, I want, before we go to the next verse, I want you to realize that's a full colon after rock. Meaning the words that are coming after are explaining are as a result of the wise builder. Next verse. He says, the rain descended, the floods came, winds blew, gossip, slander, hatred, malice, disease, poverty, attacks. And the Bible says, <laughs> Oh! Oh! Somebody said, devil, bring it on! Rain comes, and it finds you, huh? Hallelujah! Sickness comes, huh? Burn, eh? Bad words, rumors, gossip, slander! <laughs> and the Bible says, and it came to pass. Ah, uh -uh, you didn't get it. It came to pass. You didn't get it. That was the only reason why it came. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. Yes, you will not die. It came to pass. You will not fail. It shall pass too. <laughs> mm. 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 Hey. I'm not moved for what I see. I'm not moved by what I see. Look at religion. <laughs> I'm not moved by what I hear. Hey! Now your poetry. That's poetry. By what I hear. Hey! Listen to this. Oh, I'm not moved by what I feel. I'm not moved by what I see. I am moved by the water of the Lord. I am moved by the water of the Lord. Be seated. Listen, say, I don't give a damn what you've gone through. I don't give a damn what the government said. I don't give a damn what your employer said. I don't give a damn what the newspaper said. I don't give a damn what social media said. I don't give a damn what the doctor said. I don't give a damn what the man said, what the woman said. Well, I don't give a damn. What does the word of God say? What does the word of God say? Ask your neighbor. What does the word of God say in your situation? What does it say? Did he say that you're the head and not the tail? I believe him. Did he say that you're above and openly? Believe him. Did he say that... With long life, he will satisfy you. You think he didn't know the diseases of this world when he said it? You think he didn't know the number one and two killer? The plagues of the night? No. He said it all. 
He saw it all and he said, with long life, I will satisfy you. He saw all the troubles of this world, got them in one corner, squeezed them, and he said, be of good cheer, for you have overcome the world. Oh! I will not suffer. I will not suffer. I, I, I will not struggle. Ah! Nay! In all these things. Sometimes you have to say, oh, Nay! But in all these things. Nay! He said, Nay! Nay! In all these things, we are more than conquerors. I'm a victor. Come on, smell on yourself. I said, Woo, I'm a victor. That's the smell of victory. Oh, it's the smell of increase. Multiplication. Divine health. Woo, smell on yourself. Oh, Shitalaba, eternal blessing. <laughs> Let the floods come. Let the rain come. Listen. Don't be afraid of the rain. Don't be afraid of the flood. Don't be. Don't be. Don't be. Don't be. Look at it and eat your ice cream. The devil is a liar. Listen. Apostle, what if it fails? Let me answer you. Let me answer you. If there was a possibility of failure, God would not have said, let there be. I mean, the same word. The same word created the world, right? He would not have said, let there be. He would have said, I hope there will be. No. But the poet of heaven and earth. Fashioned light. And say, as we're saying, let there be. The creative force of poetry interpreted the meaning and gave light. That's the confidence that we have with him. He said, okay. If you doubt my word, let me help you understand. Do you doubt that the world exists? Do you doubt that the earth exists? And he says, okay. If you don't doubt that the earth was made by the word, heaven and earth shall pass away. But my word, if you, if you can't doubt the ground you're standing on, I'm trying to say, that one has to first disappear. And my word will still be under. When I stand on the ground and I jump like this, and I don't think, and I'm like, if I can believe in... If I can believe in the reality of the earth, doubting the word of God means you even doubt that the earth exists. That, that's what it means. That you even doubt that the, the trees you see passing, they're not real. So just go and run into them. Run into it. And just since it's not real, just go. <clears throat> Do you understand what I'm saying? It is impossible for God to lie. 
Are you going somewhere? I have a few minutes left. I'll give you an example. In Romans chapter 7 verse 5. Similar situation we're dealing with. I want to show you the issue of the law and grace. For example. He says, For when we were in the flesh, past tense, now we are in what? When we were in the flesh, the motions of sin, which were by the law, did work in our members to bring forth fruit into death. Why? Firstly, we were in the flesh. You understand? And the next verse says, For but now, but now, but now, we're delivered from the law, that being dead wherein we were held, that we should serve in the newness of the spirit, not in the oldness of the letter. Now, let me explain why we don't, God dealt with the law and brought grace. The next verse says, What shall we say then? Is the law of sin? God forbid nay, I had not known sin, but by the law. For I had not known lust except the law had said that thou shalt not covet. But in everything about sin, listen, taking occasion by the commandment, the Bible says, it brought in me all manner of concupiscence. For without the law, sin was dead. Give me the amplified of that, verse 8. Verse 8. He says, for sin finding opportunity in the commandment to express itself, it got a hold of me and aroused and stimulated all kinds of forbidden desires. Sin took at the law was not bad. The law is not bad. But sin took advantage of the law and created in me all manner of concupiscence. It created all stimulated that means it, the, the last was there but it wasn't stimulated it was inactive it was dead but when when the law came don't sin came and stirred in me all manner of forbidden desire and the bible says for without the law sin is dead the sense of it is inactive and a lifeless thing now let me explain that god could not deliver you from sin without taking away what activates it or stimulates it that's the way of god he gave you grace grace came with a fruit that's why i tell people if the grace we preach then lead to purity then we are not preaching grace if it then produce the fruit of righteousness then we're not teaching grace. We're teaching something else. Eventually, it produces the result. You understand what I'm saying? Now, there's a man who still thinks on the same planet of us, teaching the gospel, who still thinks that to get rid of sin, you have to preach the law. Because he thinks that's the only way sin can leave church. And God has told you, the law was not given. The law was not given to take sin away. It has not the power to deliver any man from sin. What is God's way? God's way is grace. Believe it or not, that's God's way. In, inculcate your traditions in your teaching and make it appear like you're making sense. You can be reasonable and yet wrong. And yet wrong. Logic and philosophy are the foundations of religion. God doesn't want to deal with men philosophically only and with reason only. Primarily, he wants to deal with you with a, from an experiential point. Firstly, that you may know him and the power of his resurrection. That you may be found in him. Not having your own righteousness, which is of the law. But the righteousness which is by the faith of Christ. The righteousness which is of God by faith. God, before he reasons with you, he wants to experience with you. Tell that when we get into the realm of reason and philosophy, we only help those that need to understand him for those that seek wisdom. Because he's both the wisdom and the power of God. Christ goes beyond any debate. 
We can't even debate whether he exists or not. Because some of us don't, are not here because we reason him. We are here because we have seen, touched, tested concerning the word of life. Somebody said hallelujah. But that was God's way. He had to take away the law to establish grace. To get men out of sin. Some people say no. You have to balance grace and law. How do you balance what kills and what gives life? How? The only balance is faith and grace. But they refuse it and still insist on their traditional way. It's the same thing. But God has told us this word is able. It has its own innate power. It has its own inherent power to perform through you. Just let it and be the poet of it. In 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 Second Peter, he says, "May grace and peace." I think verse one, uh, chapter one, verse two. He says, "May grace and peace be multiplied unto you." He says, "Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the what? The knowledge. God firstly wants to take you to the knowledge. That's why in Colossians, when we're speaking of the word of God, how it bears fruit in every way." And, and he speaks of its inherent power working in us. He says, the day that you first heard, listen, and came to know and understood the grace of God in truth. You see? God says, when the word comes, know it, understand it. If you understand it, leave it, it will work. Why isn't it working? I've not understood it. That's what it says. How do I get to the place of understanding? Simple. He has told you. Be a poet of it as you understand it. Get, for example, if you listen to something, you're building faith. And you try to believe and it fails. Listen to the sermon again. If it doesn't work, listen again. Listen again. Faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Continue listening. Continue listening. Continue. As you're listening, faith will come. There is no prayer for faith. It's not there. He told you how faith comes. He says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. If you haven't understood it, go back to it. Hallelujah. If you don't get it, again, say, ah, results are not here. You go back. Some of you listen to the word silently. Sometimes don't listen to the word silently. Sometimes when you're listening to the word and it Put the nudge in your spirit of understanding. Say one line and say, Rakatala. So brutal. Lambarok. Kataliova. Sit in your spirit and say, Ah, that's mine. Mm -hmm. Kate. Repeat the same statement. That's a doer. That's a poet of the word. That's an author. That means you're making something out of it. But, man without firstly the creative force of speaking in genesis he said let there be let there be created man in his own image and likeness after it all he goes to genesis 2 and he says and now he formed man out of the dust breathed into him the breath of life and he became a living soul men animals came out the same beast he had created in Genesis chapter 1. They took formation in chapter 2 because that's the way the mystery of creation into manifestation works. You firstly speak it. Then chapter 2 is always there. Where what you spoke takes on form. God calleth the thing that be not as though they are. He calleth the things that be not as though they are. God, I thank you for my success. It's not yet in being, but he calleth it. That's poetry right there. That's artistry. That is creation right there. 
I thank you for health. I thank you for wealth. I thank you for wisdom. I thank you for understanding. I thank you for long life. I thank you for glory. I thank you for victory. I thank you, oh Rabako, with thanksgiving, make your request. Be anxious about nothing. Be anxious about nothing. Be anxious about nothing. But with all prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, make your request. With thanksgiving, make your request. Not with make your request and then thank. He said, no, with thanksgiving, make your request. As you're creating that, as you're speaking it, as you're speaking it, Joshua 1 8. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. Thou shall meditate therein day and night. Now, listen, the next verse, the next line. That thou mayst observe. He didn't say, and thou mayst observe. If you speak and meditate, it's automatic you will observe to do. Who has understood it? It's automatic you will observe to do. He says, this book of the law shall not depart from out of your mouth. It can't depart. You, you don't just speak it in a sermon. No. Oh my God, I wish you would mean the car. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I'm deep. I'm Akara. Sokoto. Listen. We can't stop talking. T tell your neighbor, I can't stop talking. You can't stop talking the word. Unless you want to die. Uh-uh. We don't stop talking. Tell your neighbor we don't stop talking. It does not depart from your mouth. You meditate therein day and night that thou mayst observe to do. That thou mayst observe to do according to all that is written. That, you, that means if you meditate, speak, you'll find yourself observing. Meditate and speak that you may observe to do. What don't you get? That you may observe to do. He didn't say, and you may observe. He says, that you may observe to do. That means, if you want to do a miracle, meditate it and speak it. I'm a miracle worker. I'm a performer of miracles. In the mighty name of Jesus, the lame walk, the blind sit. Say it. I'm rich. I'm rich. I'm rich, I'm wise, I'm wise, I'm wise, I'm healthy, I'm healthy, I'm healthy. As you continue to do that, the power to do, by its own inherent power, you find yourself obeying. So obedience is not the nudge of the human spirit to respond to God. No, it is the fruit of a human spirit responding to the word of God the word of God speaking and meditating it under the right principles you find yourself doing it that's why in the next verse there he, no, 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 in that, he says, that for then that you shall make your way your way your way your way thy way thy way you make you 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 Prosperity is no longer in the hand of God to do. He gave you what makes you prosperous. Use it. Poet. Poetess, use it. You, the Bible says, shall make thy way prosperous and have good success. That's why in the next line he asked you. He, he, he was talking to Joshua. In the next line he says, have I not commanded you? He's reminding the guy who fears. He's reminding the man who fears. Have I not commanded you, be strong and of a good courage. Have I not commanded you, be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Listen, when it comes to fearing, think. There's a command. God doesn't request you. 
please don't fear. He says, don't fear. Oh, be dismayed. That's why I tell people, if fear comes, immediately they say, God, I'm sorry. <laughs> Woo! Why? He refused you to be dismayed. But apostle, you don't understand. No, darling. You don't understand. But you don't get it. You don't know what I'm going. No, no, no. You are the one who doesn't get it. Somebody said hallelujah. Somebody said hallelujah. I'm a success. I'm going upward. I'm increasing in every way, on every side. I believe the word of God. It is working in me according to its center and power. So there's two reasons why it can't work. Either you have not known and understood it, or you're receiving the wrong word. How do you know you're receiving the wrong word if it's not working for anybody? <laughs> How many here can testify that the word you've had here has worked for you? So if it hasn't worked for you, and all your neighbors have put up, then you, you, you have a problem. Praise God. Hallelujah. That's why he says, ever since you came to know the grace of God in truth. The engrafted word of God that settles in your heart, it cannot settle until you, you learn to meditate. If you haven't yet learned to speak and read and speak and hear and speak, it's still here. But as you continue speaking, praise God. Floods come. Wind comes. Rumors come. Yay. Losses come. I don't care. What's reported in the world come. I'll still be standing. Get to your feet. We're going to take two minutes of poetry. <laughs> Make, create something right now. Come on, just two minutes of creating something. Say something. What is happening right now is spiritual. What you're doing right now is spiritual. Right, what you're doing right now, these two minutes. When mountains fall, I will stand. By the power of your hand in your heart, oh, times outweigh when my soul speak to your family, create when mountains fall, speak to your help. I'll stand. Speak to your children, your finances, by the power of your blessings in your heart. I will pray, and my soul knows. Joy and strength Each day I find That my soul knows Forgiveness, Lord I know it's mine My soul knows me When mountains fall, come on, say something. By the power of your head, in your heart, I will pray.
give the Lord a mighty hand clap of praise if you believe that what you're saying is done. C clap like it is finished. You're never going to talk about it except like a past tense. You're never going to comment it except as a new victory. You're never going to open your mouth about it except as a triumph. In the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, have your answer, Jesus. Give him a pain suffering. Listen. I want to do two things before I close service. There is 17 people on this ground. I have heard the Spirit has told me. There is 17 people on this ground. You're 17. One, two, three. 17. And, um, I've had sort of the prayer of your heart pertaining how you want God to use you. I know what you're asking for. Come on, go! Somebody give the Lord a man of praise. If you're sick in your body, receive your healing now. Lung issues heal, stomach issues heal, back issues. Somebody with a back issue on the left, right side of the back. God heals. God heals. If you are slated for an operation soon, cancel it now and receive your healing. In the mighty name of Jesus. I speak upon your finances. Great doors are opening for you. Come on, this is poetry right here. Meditate it. For you to build the kingdom of God. Doors are opening for you financially. Doors are opening for you in your marriage and in your relationship. Great things are happening for you. This week is going to be way beautiful than any week before. If you believe it, shout amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. <laughs> I'm going to be happy. Lastly, just give me two minutes. We need to see this. If you're here and you've never given your life to Christ, and what you've heard tonight tells you one thing, I want to join these people. I want to join the God they believe. I, I want to enter the covenant that they're professing. Come and receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. If you're there and you say, I've never received him as my Lord and Savior, and you want to receive him, come and receive him as your Lord and Savior. Come. 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 I'm so glad I love you. Precious Jesus, say your friend and no come now. We'll be with Yes, he From seen and fell to see that from Jesus we make life and rest. I love those poets. Their joy and peace. <laughs> life is mine. Rest is mine. Joy is mine. Peace is mine. Thank you, Jesus. This is beautiful.
Come on, encourage them, encourage them. Heaven is preparing a party. Paul has given me a high five. <laughs> Come on, poetry. In my head. Thank you, Jesus. Repeat this one after me. Say, Jesus, tonight I receive you as my Lord and Savior. I believe that you died for my sin and were raised for my glory. So I thank you that my life is changed forever. Amen. You who have made that prayer, you're going to walk there, we're going to take your numbers, your phone numbers, just to follow you up, to make sure. The message you have just heard was brought to you by Sonero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 041-466-4291 or email us at sonerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.sonero.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowship at UMA Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Sonero. Sonero. Make manifest.